The YouTube API has a different quota system than most of the other Google APIs. In this video, we are going to go through what cost-based quota is and how much making requests to the YouTube API are actually going to cost you. Hi, this is Linda from DevTips, where I try to make your development experience a little easier by guiding you through some of the key concepts quickly and simply. My name is Linda Lawton. I have been an application developer for 25 years. I am a Google developer expert, and I have been working with the Google APIs for more than eight years. Please remember to like and subscribe for more simple developer tips. As always, any links mentioned in the video can be found in the description below. Let's get started. When working with Google APIs, you will often hear the term quota. However, when working with the YouTube API, you will hear the term cost-based quota. In this video, we will go over what quota is, what cost-based quota is, and how much requests will actually cost you. And after that, I'm gonna give you my number one tip with regard to the YouTube API and cost-based quotas. So what are quotas? APRs are run on servers, and servers have a limited number of requests that they can respond to. In order to ensure that everyone can use the API, companies like Google set limits as to how many requests an application like yours can make against the API. Normally this is per day or per minute. So your quota is the number of requests your application is allowed to make to the API over a period of time. So what is a cost-based quota? And how much money is each request going to cost you? You'll be happy to hear that cost-based quotas have nothing to do with money. When you create your project on Google Developer Console, you are given a default quota limit. It may be easier for you to think of this quota as points. You were probably given 10,000 quota points when you created your project. Each request that you make against the API is going to cost some of these points. They will be subtracted from your overall allotment for that day. So you were given a total set of points which you can use and each request you make has a cost which is subtracted from your overall allotment. It is a good idea to check the quota calculator and familiarize yourself with the different request costs. I have left a link in the description below to the YouTube API quota cost calculator. Each resource and method within the API has a different cost. Things like list tend to only cost one, whereas updates will cost you around 50. As you can see, uploading a video will really eat your quota, costing a whopping 1,600 quota points. Now here is my bonus tip when working with the YouTube API and the quota costs. You can apply for a quota extension. In the Google Developer Console, in the section where your quota is listed, you can apply to extend your quota. This means that Google will give you an increase in the default 10,000 point allotment. I am going to tell you that this can take time to get approved, as in months. So start early. That's all I have right now on the YouTube API and cost-based quotas. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you now understand how cost-based quotas works and are ready to implement the YouTube API in your application. I hope to see you again in my next video. And if you would like to see more tutorials or videos from me on the YouTube API or on quotas, please let me know in the comment section below.